Hello, thank you for joining us. We are so glad that you're here and we're excited to tell you more about the Skippy program for the 2023-2024 school year. My name is Melissa Griffin and I am the Technical Assistance Coordinator for Skippy. My name is Dana Bennett and I am a Technical Assistance Specialist for Skippy. This session will be shared to South Carolina Partnerships for Inclusion or Skippy YouTube um, site. So for those of you who are interested in viewing it, but were unable to join us today. The South Carolina Partnerships for Inclusion, affectionately known as Skippy, is an early childhood technical assistance center focused on increasing inclusive opportunities and school readiness for preschool children with disabilities. Skippy understands that the path to successful adulthood begins with positive early childhood experiences. We reinforce this by partnering with school districts to build local capacity and supporting all young children and their families to belong and thrive within their communities. We are part of the newly formed TA network called SE Teams. We use a professional development model of technical assistance, training, and ongoing support to meet the needs of district schools and educators. You see here all the members of the Skippy team. Skippy includes our technical assistance team, our pyramid pieces team, and the SEED Academy team. We all work together to provide professional learning opportunities to support districts across South Carolina. So what do we do here at Skippy? Well, like we mentioned previously, we're a South Carolina Early Childhood Technical Assistance Center funded through the South Carolina Office of Special Education Services, or OSIS. We provide individualized assistance to districts across the state to help them meet the federal indicators to improve early childhood outcomes. This video we're about to see, while filmed by the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction, aligns really well with our mission and our own South Carolina state's profile of the South Carolina graduate. We're gonna go ahead and play it. And while you're watching, listen for the outcomes of the inclusive mo model that was implemented in this district. I love the emphasis on meaningful participation and a true sense of belonging that this video conveys. That's what we want for, for South Carolina and that's what Skippy is all about. So we'll go ahead and play that now. I felt nervous, very nervous. Um, I was with him full time and then to hand him over is nerve wracking. <laughs> mostly fear of the unknown. I didn't know how we would fare in a, a classroom setting with all those typically developing kids and then how he would um, understand those instructions and those lessons that are being taught by the teachers. In early childhood, Every classroom is an inclusive classroom. Well, whether you're talking about children with abilities or just children that have had different life experiences up until this point, you look at your environment differently and how is the environment accessible to every child? And how is your environment set up so that every child is getting exactly what they need? Our um, mission and vision statement are anchored in um, high expectations and outcomes for all students. So living that out at the early childhood level, that was the work. I think it all starts with that IEP process. So really having that evaluation team and the current team writing those functional goals and objectives. My goal is that services such as speech, OT, PT, all those could be embedded right within the classroom and the routines that we have. When you are an, an early childhood kid between three and five years old, you want to do what your friends are doing and to have children the expectation that they're going to sit and do one specific thing um, at any given time that you choose doesn't always work out but when it's an itinerant model having those service providers coming into that environment um, working with kids doing things that kids are naturally doing um, is in the best interest of kids we used to have our kids that are the kids in 
in childcare and then our kids with IEPs that were joining that group. So it kind of starting out meeting those needs more individually, which has really turned into that all that joint ownership. All kids belong, both reg ed and special ed teacher and therapist too, that we all are a team for every child. I think teachers learn from other teachers. And so when you have special education people in there, whether it's an OT or a PT or a speech person or just a special education teacher, they are modeling different behaviors or using different words that as the regular ed teacher, you can listen and go, oh, I may be able to use that with another child. He's learning in class. He's engaged in class. He has relationships. Before we were like thinking, maybe we're going to be there for the for the rest of our lives to support him with all the needs that he got. But um, we are so happy to see that um, he can really do the things that he can do right now. Those skills has developed so much. He can truly create something wonderful and. It really makes us, makes us very proud. I think what we know now is that there are more questions than there are answers and to be open to every opportunity that you are given um, to, to learn and to develop always what's in the best interest of the child and to give them those opportunities to show you what they need and to listen to them. It makes me really optimistic for his future. You know, I used to worry a lot about, you know, what he fit in, would he get picked on? you know, how would his classroom environment be? But he has become quite the popular guy at school. Um, so he comes in the class and I can't even tell you how many kids hug him. <laughs> he has true friendships, true relationships in class. And he brings a, a special um, just energy to the class. And it's positive for his classmates too, to see that. I hope inclusion promotes awareness to those typically developing kids that there are there are other kids like our son mm -hmm. that um, need support um, as, as they as they try to um, learn their way through life. There's a softness there. There's an empathy there um, that I see in his peers. So we didn't expect that, but we love it. We know that young children need a variety of rich experiences with all of their peers, and we also know that not only children with but those without disabilities benefit from inclusive environments. Wisconsin's vision, every child a graduate, college and career ready, is not possible unless our children with disabilities have the opportunity for meaningful participation in their classrooms, in their schools, and in their communities. Now is the time to get past the hurdles. Whether you work in private or public school settings, in center or family-based childcare, Head Start or special education services, every one of us will be able to take great joy in making a difference for our kids and their families. As you move. Just love that video. Um, every time I see it, it's just, it's fabulous. Um, so here at Skippy, we have a wide variety of supports ready to assist you. Um, we provide tier technical assistance to meet the individual needs of districts, starting with universal supports. So universal supports is our um, early childhood conference, which we have coming up next week. We have our webinars, we have a quarterly newsletter and our website. Um, we also are on all of the social media platforms now. Um, so please do check us out. Um, and those supports are for all districts, any district, regardless of where they are in their process, regardless of where they are um, in inclusion, can access this information and um, utilize it in their in their district. Um, the other thing that we really stress is enhancing community partnerships and resources. And so we know early childhood inclusion doesn't happen within district settings only, right? Um, to be successful, early childhood inclusion requires community-wide partnership um, that brings families, community child care programs, Head Start, district leaders, teachers, and other community members together to build a culture of inclusion. We've worked with many district teams to support 
these cross collaborative partnerships and relationships. And we can also connect to districts doing similar work and their potential partners. So that is one thing that we feel very strongly about. Um, as you look at our circle here, you can see that we started outside with universal supports and then we moved to targeted supports. Um, and so this is more individualized resources um, for specific needs identified by the district or through state data. Um, and so we provide resources and support for developing district level cross-sector community preschool inclusion leadership teams. I know that's a mouthful. Um, we will work with that team to evaluate the district's strengths and also areas for growth pertaining to inclusion and the early childhood indicators. Um, and we also facilitate the creation of a five-year strategic plan um, to improve early childhood outcomes. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. So right now, targeted support and intensive support um, are, are pretty in line with one another. We may see that change in the future, but for the 23, 24 school year, um, that is what you'll see is kind of a combination of the two. Okay. So this is what the process for our 23, 24 school year will look like. Um, we are opening our application today. Whoops. There we go. And we will have that available until 10-6. So if you are interested in getting um, technical assistance from Skippy on a more personalized level, then I would recommend that you visit our website. We'll have a QR code at the end of this presentation that you can utilize to access the application. Um, and then that application process will close on 10-6. Um, we provide the path, which um, we offer one in-person session, which is full day, two in-person sessions, which is two half days, um, or one virtual session. And that's to accommodate the needs of a district and what they would prefer. Um, Although participation is voluntary, it's also needs-based. And so applications will be reviewed um, and priority districts will be selected based on the information in the application as well as the, the information submitted from OSIS. Okay, so step two. Step two would be that if they are accepted, then we will reach out and introduce ourselves um, and schedule the past session in the format requested by the district. Um, like I mentioned, we'll learn more about path planning as we move through this presentation. And then district teams will complete um, the self-assessment facilitator's guide and tool to identify strengths and weaknesses or areas for growth within their district. Um, this will assist with developing the North Star goals or the five-year goals and identifying the steps to achieve them. All right. So in step three, we will review the self-assessment tool and complete an eco map, which will help identify and evaluate the current status of relationships with partners um, and also identify partnerships that we want to promote or build. Um, we will also complete the path to determine the direction of the district and identify possible TA activities tailored to the individual school districts and their goals. Um, the path, as you've heard me talk about, stands for uh, planning alternative tomorrows with hope. And that was developed by Jack Pierpoint and Marsha Forrest in 1992. Um, it's a planning tool that begins with the end in mind, and then we kind of work backwards to determine the steps that must be taken to achieve the ultimate goal or the North Star goal, um, which is sky's the limit, everything you ever dreamed of. Um, so we will set those and kind of then figure out what we need to do to get there. As you see in the yellow block, um, the district will work directly with Skip ETA, either specialist or coordinator to schedule and complete those 
TA activities that were determined necessary or um, preferred. And that could include webinars or um, professional development, consultation, coaching, et cetera. Um, and then as you move on, you will meet regularly um, with the TA specialist and the district team to review data and evaluate progress. Um, we will, I do want to say that we will have some data requests, but I know that that kind of makes everybody panic. So don't panic. Um, that's strictly to for us to utilize to determine the progress and the direction. So that data is not submitted to OSIS. Um, it's only utilized to help guide the TA process, um, which is a fluid process. So it's tailored to the district's needs, and then we can adjust it based on changing circumstances within the district, um, whether or not there's progress and feedback from the district team. Um, and then blue, you'll see at the end of the school year, we will meet again to review and evaluate the progress made and determine the direction for revision of the path and the upcoming school year. As with anything, we have responsibilities on both sides. Um, and so as your Skippy team, we promise to demonstrate professionalism and respect in all of our interactions. Um, we will establish team member roles and a point of contact for both Skippy and the district to streamline communications. Um, we will create engaging and um, accepting professional environment, which all members can feel comfortable sharing their ideas and asking questions because we know how important that is. Um, maintain consistent and open communication with the district to ensure that the most accurate and up-to-date information is readily available. And that's going to help guide those TA activities and um, whether or not we make changes to the path plan. Um, we will always respond promptly to phone calls, emails, and requests for support or advisement. And we will facilitate opportunities to obtain feedback um, from the district team in order to best meet the needs and the different learning styles of staff. Um, additionally, we will utilize data connect, uh, collection, excuse me, methods for monitoring progress towards goals, as well as identifying strengths and areas in need of improvement um, and initiate monthly check-ins just to kind of see how things are going and see if there's any additional supports that we can provide that will assist the district in meeting action items within the established timeframe. Um, in summary, the Skippy team is here to help you build capacity. What that looks like is we will collaborate and partner with districts to support them in their delivery of evidence-based practices. And of course, we also have some responsibilities and role or roles and responsibilities for the school district team. And many of these are the same. So um, demonstrating professionalism and respect in interactions, actively participating in scheduled meetings. So if, like I mentioned, it's a fluid process. If a meeting needs to be rescheduled, that's okay. Um, if you can just let us know as soon as you're aware of that need so that we can um, adjust and plan accordingly. We want to maintain consistent and open communication with this, with Skippy to ensure that the most accurate and up-to-date information is readily available, just as Skippy will with a district. Um, respond promptly to phone calls, emails, and requests for information as well. And notify Skippy of any changes within the district that will directly affect the delivery of technical assistance or progress towards goals. So things, things change, right? Every day is um, seems like a, a different change. So just if you can keep your, your Skippy contact um, up to date on those changes, then we can work with you to adjust as needed. Um, it's also highly recommended that district staff participate in Skippy's Early Childhood Inclusion Conference um, that will allow each team time for planning and preparation. Um, and we, like I mentioned, that's coming up next week. So hopefully you guys will be joining us. Um, but if not, we would welcome you to join us next year. 
Well, through all that process, we do have supports that work alongside or partner with Skippy to share as well. And all of these are help here to help support you in your building capacity um, to deliver all those services to the children and families in South Carolina. Uh, the, hopefully you've heard of the pyramid model. The pyramid model is a framework of evidence-based practices for promoting young children's healthy social and emotional development because we know that social emotional development is the foundation for all other learning. Research shows that children who have healthy social emotional skills tend to learn better, are more likely to stay in school and will be better able to make and keep lifelong friends. So you might be wondering what this all has to do with available supports through Skippy, but Skippy has Pyramid Pieces team to support this model. And Pyramid Pieces offer support for peer, program wide pyramid model implementation within early childhood programs. In program wide implementation, a leadership team guides the process and develops the supports and infrastructure needed to ensure the implementation of the pyramid model can occur within the classrooms and services provided to children and their families. So we've got many folks around the state um, and state leadership teams working together to support this initiative across early childhood sectors in South Carolina. And that includes child care centers, family child care centers, Head Start, and South Carolina school districts. The application period for those interested in pursuing program-wide implementation of the pyramid model opens soon. And to learn more about that program-wide implementation and what to expect when partnering with Pyramid Pieces, an information session for the next cohort will be held on October 3rd at 12 p.m. Um, and if you're watching this recording after that point, um, you can go onto the Skippy website and you can click on services and programs and find information there on the next available cohort and what Pyramid Pieces has going on from there. As we mentioned earlier, Skippy is part of a newly formed technical assistance network called SC Teams. And Teams stands for Transition, Early Childhood, Academic, Multi-Tiered Systems, and Social Emotional and Behavioral. It's funded by and in support of South Carolina Department of Education's Office of Special Education Services, or OSIS. The mission of this network is to collaborate with OSIS to increase the local capacity of school districts and schools to support the implementation and scaling up of evidence-based practices to improve outcomes for children ages 3 to 21 in our state. And the website for SE Teams is currently in development, but as soon as that comes out, we'll be sharing that via our Skippy website um, on our listserv, and you can, you will let you know as soon as it's there. Um, additionally, the Special Education Itinerant Teacher, or SEIT Academy, is a virtual continuing education series including a SEAT coach, and it's designed to promote and support the implementation of a special education itinerant model within early childhood programs as a part of an expanding, expanding that continuum of services for preschool children and disabilities. Because as we know, having options for least restrictive environments is required under the IDEA. So that's in, put in place to help you out with that. Today, you've heard us talk about all, all the ways that Skippy can assist with implementing inclusive practices and meeting early childhood indicators within your district. Our team is incredibly passionate about what we do. But if you're anything like any of us, when, I, when you're about to invest your time or money into a product, you really want to hear some reviews, some, some information on those who have gone through that process. So we have some videos um, uh, on what that looks like in other districts. So without further ado, you can go ahead and play that video. So as the newest member of our district team, one of the things that I have found uh, that Skippy has done for us is, is they've become a part of our team, our preschool team. 
They have been an invaluable resource to us. Um, they helped us with placements and um, just helping us to provide inclusive settings for our, our students in our district. So now we're serving the child rather than trying to fit the services, fit the child into the services we provide. Skippy has provided us a lot of information and a lot of resources over the years, but some of the most important ones that we really appreciate have been not only their ability to link us with other districts and other um, resources in the community that have helped our program grow, they've also provided us with professional development, such as the Seat Academy, which was a tremendous help. Um, and they've also been able to provide professional development through the district leadership days. Also having that collaboration with Terry was a benefit. She was able to come to some of our team meetings um, and help guide us and give us support. So it definitely, you know, took some time and effort, but it was definitely worth it. And then the partnership with Dr. Yes. Through our partnership with Skippy, we have improved our state Department of Education's LRE data. Um, from 2016-17, we scored a zero. And with this partnership, we've improved that score to a three. We've also been able to improve our continuum of services options. Um, previously in 2016-17, we had two options and we've improved to five different options for our students. Awesome. Well, first of all, I wanna make sure we recognize our district partners who volunteered to step out of their comfort zone and let us catch them on camera. Thank you, you all rock. Secondly, I have to tell you that when our communications co coordinator, Courtney, first sent us the final product, we were touched and thankful. We all chose this work to make a difference in the lives of children, but it can be so easy to get stuck in the ups and the downs of daily tasks. Hearing about the progress that has been made in districts as a result of the partnership of Skippy is a great reminder that each one of us can make a difference when we work together. Schwartz, Odom, and Sandal said programs, not children, have to be ready for inclusion. We often hear statements like, but that child isn't ready for that classroom. What does that mean? What does it take to be ready to be with other three and four-year-olds? The primary goal for early childhood programs is helping young children be prepared for kindergarten, learning social skills, identifying emotions, and working on self-regulation skills. All three and four-year-olds are working on this. So how are we helping young children with disabilities by isolating or segregating them and not providing access to their peers on the general education curriculum? Don't we really mean that classrooms are not ready for the child? If we flip our way of thinking to providing environments that are accessible to each and every child with supports that allow for communication and collaboration, removing barriers and focusing on possibilities to belonging for all children, we can experience success across according to the research that has been conducted on inclusive environments like the one shown here. And Skippy is here to help you with that. That being said, we are here. Here's our contact information. You can follow us on social media at the links on the left. We have a general email box, skippy at mailbox.se.edu. And you can scan this uh, QR code here to subscribe to our quarterly newsletter. We're going to give you our, our other contact information at the very end, Melissa, and my contact. And on the next slide, you'll get more information how to hook up with um, our services here. So if you scan the QR code here, you'll be able to complete that application to go through that process that Melissa described for you earlier. Um, to receive those universal or those targeted or those intensive supports. And the next slide has our contact information should you want to get a hold of us directly. Thank you so much.
We appreciate your time and we look forward to working with you soon. Thank you.